Welcome to our Mind the Moments Thursday morning gathering brought to you by Harvard Pilgrim Healthcare and Tufts Health Plan. This is a place where we invite experienced mindfulness teachers to speak with us about what mindfulness means to them and to discuss as a community how we can incorporate these practices into our daily lives. I'm Suzanne Rowe Palacino, and I'm always so happy to be here this morning on Thursdays, as usual, with Tara Healy, founder and director of Harvard Pilgrim Healthcare's Mindfulness Program. Good morning, Tara. Good morning, Suzanne. Good morning, everyone. So happy to see you here. Nice to see everyone this morning. So today, Tara will start us off with a question and <laughs> then lead us in a guided practice. And after that, we'll have time for questions. So if you're interested in opening up the chat, just go to the bottom of the screen and then um, you can click the blue drop down menu to change hosts and panelists to everyone and everyone can see your comments as they are typed. All right, so as we are, looks like we've got our group settled. Tara, what, would the, what kind of question do we want to start with? Yeah, you? so um, I've been thinking a lot lately about the sense of interconnectedness about, um, and especially related to various things that are happening on the planet. So for instance, um, thinking about the war in Ukraine and that because of the war in Ukraine, I mean, there've been so many impacts, but one of them is they could not plant wheat, which is a huge crop for Europe. And so there's lots and lots of worry about food shortages. Um, and with COVID, there have been a lot of supply chain issues so that we're so interconnected and that the impacts of various things, whether they're environmental, um, political, are often really far reaching. But I also was thinking not just about the, the negative aspects of that, but also the positive and really simple things like you know, when we're driving, if somebody lets me cut into the line, it's often like, I feel so grateful and sometimes surprised that then when it's my turn to let someone in, I'll do the same. So um, the ripple effects that our actions have, not only on us, but on others, and the ripple effects of larger kind of environmental or political impacts and the impacts on us. And um, I this morning I was on Facebook and I said to Suzanne, I swear sometimes social media is like reading our minds, but this quote came up that I wanna read by Sylvia Earle. Now, Sylvia Earle was born in 1935. She is a marine biologist. Uh, she's an author and a lecturer, and she's just a remarkable human. And here's her quote. Even if you never have the chance to see or touch the ocean, the ocean touches you with every breath you take, every drop of water you drink, every bite you consume. Everyone everywhere is inextricably connected to and utterly dependent upon the existence of the sea. And I, um, I loved reading that this morning, especially given what I have been kind of pondering lately. And as Suzanne and I were talking a little while ago, she reminded me that Earth Day is coming up. And um, so given this beautiful quote by Sylvia Earle and that Earth Day is actually tomorrow, what is something that you have been doing, that you are doing, or that you plan to do to protect the earth? And it can be, it can be something really small, it could be something big, but what is something that you, you have done, you are doing now, or you plan to do in the future? Um, to make an impact on this earth that we rely on um, so much. So uh, Suzanne, let's like start with you and, uh, and it doesn't have to be one thing. So it could be, you know, it could be a couple things that you're doing that, that make a difference. Um, 
environmentally. Yeah. So you can just go ahead and start to populate the chat. And Suzanne, what's your what's coming yeah. to mind? So <clears throat> just a few things. We were talking earlier that I, I I will really when I go to the grocery store, I really avoid buying anything with plastic. So if I'm getting mayonnaise, I'll go to the brand that has the glass. I just have been doing that a lot lately. Yeah. Um, and I'll also, you know, I don't really buy from Amazon. I, I try not to buy online um, because of all the packaging. Um, and so th those are a few things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. no, that's, that's great. Um, yeah. yeah, so I mean, just, I think a couple things that come to mind for me are um, I'm driving less and really making a concerted effort to drive less so that I'm not using so much energy. Um, and I've also, this was a couple of years ago, but I really kind of um, swore off buying plastic water bottles. And even, even if they're available and free, I, um, I hesitate taking them. So I've kind of made this pact with myself that unless I'm in a, a like a health consequence where I really need water, would I do that? But more just ha I have plenty of, you know, bottles, bottles around. So um, I think just limiting plastic in general, but being really aware of the water bottle situation. Yeah. yeah. yeah those are so important, especially the driving. Like I, I think that's. You know, someone's mentioned in the chat too that she's working from home and driving less. Yes. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, I mean, it's a, it's really in some ways it's a choice. Um, Absolutely, and recycled clothing too. Yeah, like um, reusable straws. Yes, I mean it's it's important. You know, one of the things Sylvia Earle also talks about is how one, one person can make a difference, that nothing is too small. Um, yeah, native plants, fertilizer, pesticide, get rid of the glyphosate, <laughs> um, shopping at thrift stores. And I think, you know, there's also a lot of companies that are doing, um, that are recycling clothes. So Patagonia um, has a site called Worn Wear and it's all, and it's, you know, I have purchased from them on the Worn Wear site, which is, uh, you know, yeah. I mean, so there's there's a lot, just introduce my daughter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yes, thrift stores. Yeah, they're, they're better than they used to be. They're pretty, pretty amazing. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. my daughters don't really don't shop anywhere but thrift stores. Oh days. yeah! I mean, wow, that's for something yeah. that's really you know specific. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah. No, that's that's awesome. Um, Picking up trash um, on walks. Too. Yes, you get that for sure. Yep. Oh, good thing. Yeah, I mean, I mean, it all matters. Like I was saying to Suzanne this morning, today is trash day and recycle day. And I was cleaning the fridge out and I threw a container away. And then I looked and I was like, hey, that's, that can be recycled. There was like, just for a moment, almost like, oh, I'm not going to bother because I have to clean it. And then I was like, no, mm -hmm. <laughs> like it's not going to take me long to go to the sink and to clean this properly so that I can put it in the right container. So, um, yeah. So and that's anyway. one other that's yeah. one other thing I use the glass containers for is I just, I, I put them in the dishwasher and I, I put leftovers yes. in them. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, yes. That's that salsa is. containers that are nice and wide. I, I mean, yeah. And then, you know, like TJ Maxx and Marshall sell glass containers now, you know, so like for food storage, I mean, it's just a better option. Yeah. Um, recycling a lot of household things. Nice with food too. Yeah. 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 There's so much, right. There's so much we can do to even just like change up our environment a little bit. Um, yeah. So with Earth Day uh, tomorrow um, and, and also, 
you know, I feel like with COVID, so many of us have taken advantage of being in nature and just the restorative value of what, you know, just our, our feet on the earth. Like sometimes I'll just have bare feet, even though it's cold, but just, just in the morning a little bit to feel the earth underneath my feet. Um, yeah, just to kind of breathe in the air and the, yeah. It's all, it's all good. So um, let's, uh, let's go ahead and uh, move into a practice and I'll take us through, you know, a settling a body scan just to kind of check in with the body and then we'll land on, we'll do more of a concentration practice. So uh, we'll land on either breath sensation or sound in the room or you know, whatever, whatever your, um, you feel that you're going to most easily anchor to. So remember, it doesn't matter what you choose. What matters is the awareness you are able to bring, and it can change from day to day. So you could even take the palms of your hands and rest them on a table in front of you. And just that point of contact becomes what you return to. Remember, we're not trying to stop thought at all. <laughs> We're just seeing that when we've engaged in a narrative, a memory, or planning, ah, thinking, soften the body, return to your anchor over and over again, just like repetitions if you were lifting weights. All right, so let's settle in, seated or standing. Take a couple deep breaths on your own as a way to settle any surface tension from the activity of the day. Surrender your weight into the support of the surface, maintaining a spine that is straight but not stiff, softening the shoulders, and taking a moment to just notice how the body is. Any sensation in particular that's making itself known to you, that could be the points of contact along the back of the body and the chair or the soles of the feet and the floor. Could be the heartbeat, the pulsing or vibration. So just whole body awareness just for a moment. And expand awareness outward to include sound in the room or outside of the room, just noting hearing. So receiving sound. And as you feel ready, begin to bring awareness back inward, allowing sound to remain in the background as it will, not a problem. Coming back into the whole body. Starting at the very top of the head, we'll just move awareness through the various regions of the body, sweeping through, softening, in places where we feel we can soften, but not to worry if you can't. So bringing awareness down over the sides of the head, including the ears and the back of the head. And coming around to the face, softening the eyes and the nose, the jaw, even the tongue, the tongue rest in the mouth. Sweeping awareness down over the shoulders, upper arms, forearms, and hands, softening, releasing, and coming to the torso, so the front of the body, the back of the body internally. And moving now down over the hips and thighs, knees, lower legs and feet. 
holding this region of the body in your field of awareness, noticing sensation or lack of sensation, perhaps aware of a point of contact in this part of the body. And just what that feels like, noticing what that feels like. And releasing. And moving now to an anchor that will return our attention to our sense of awareness to over and over again throughout the remaining minutes in this practice. So what's easiest for you to anchor to? Breath sensation, somewhere in the body, it doesn't matter where, it could be abdomen, chest, nostrils, or someplace else. So as you breathe in and breathe out, where is that sensation most noticeable? And just simply tracking the in-breath and the out-breath. Also find to use something else like sound or another body sensation, just something that you can return to. Noticing where the mind is, soft mental note thinking, you can be more specific like planning or whatever. Soften the body, there's always a subtle contraction when thought slips in, softening the body, and gently returning to your anchor.
And again, noticing where the mind is. Soften the body and simply return to your anchor. And as we bring this meditation to a close, may we be peaceful and at ease. May our heart be soft and open. May we be safe and protected and our body healthy and strong. And for all of those known and unknown to us, may they be peaceful and at ease. May their hearts be soft and open. May they be safe and protected and their bodies healthy and strong. May the merit of our practice be for the benefit of all beings everywhere. As you feel ready, if your eyes were closed, you can open. Um, and even if they were open, um, it's just helpful to kind of reorient to the space that you're in. You know, take a moment to just look around the room, perhaps take a little bit of a stretch. Um, and, uh, yeah. So um, any thoughts or observations about your own practice this morning? Any questions at all that have arisen for you to feel free to um, put those in the chat. Um, and I typically, and I think I said this each time, but what I always find so interesting in practice is that a thought slips in unnoticed, and then we often, you know, we'll have a narrative going, but we don't see it. Then we wake up to it. There's always, always a very subtle bodily contraction when we're thinking. We don't notice it so much. So this is an opportunity to take a, just take a moment to, as soon as you, ah, thinking, you can be more specific. And it actually helps settle the mind. It's like the culprit has been seen. Ah, thinking, you could be more specific, like worrying or regretting or planning. Ah, uh, soften and just return to your anchor. And you're doing it correctly. Another thought's gonna slip in and you might be kind of ruminating on it and then you'll notice it, that's a perfect moment. Same thing, ah, planning, soften, return. Over and over and over again, just like, exercising, you know, whether you're walking or running or lifting weights, you're doing repetitions to help strengthen the body. Uh, you're developing these abiding traits that can carry you through the world. We're just developing a, this abiding trait in consciousness and awareness in settling the mind so that we can employ the concentrated mind in the service of our day-to-day -day life. We can see our impulses more quickly. We can align with our belt. That helps us align with our deepest values. So, yeah, yeah, and and not to not to judge ourselves too much about if we have a time where we're just continually those thoughts are taking us away. Because I really have come to the point where if I have that kind of a sitting, 
I mean, I'm just grateful to be sitting in the quiet. I mean, yeah. that, if you set aside that time, there's a lot to be said for that. Yeah. Uh, where we can, you know, even though our body doesn't feel as settled, it's still more settled than if we're running around doing other activities. So it's always absolutely. beneficial. Yeah, no, it's abs absolutely true. And I think about, you know, some of my teachers like Joseph Goldstein and Sharon Salzberg, where they would say, the whole hour, you know, when they were practicing in Southeast Asia, the whole hour they were lost in thought, but next time it'll be better, <laughs> you know, yeah. like, so it's- Or it'll uh, be different. <laughs> yeah, it'll be different. It'll be different, not a value judgment, but mm -hmm. um, yeah, that it's not, it's, the practice is simple, but, I, and I think Suzanne, as you say, just stilling the body, and allowing whatever is happening to happen without trying to fight against it, but just soften into it, especially if it's unpleasant. If it's pleasant, it's easier. But mm -hmm. um, I know we're close to the time and I did have one more Sylvia Earle quote that I wanted to quickly read, which yeah. since I wanna like kind of bookend and I know Suzanne, you want something to say something too, but she says, the ocean is the cornerstone of Earth's life support system. It shapes climate and weather. It holds most of life on earth. 97% of the earth's water is there. It's what makes life possible for us. Yeah. I have such a connection to the ocean, so. Yeah, I yes. Um, I, I had one from Margaret Mead that said, and just on our the little things that we're trying to do for Earth Day, never doubt that a small group of thoughtful, <clears throat> committed citizens can change the world. Indeed, it's the only thing that ever has. Yes, yeah, we know that historically, yeah. Yeah. Well, so happy Earth Day and thank you so much for joining and, you know, for your contributions yeah. and, um, just, just as an FYI, that was a 12 minute practice. So we're, we're really getting ready for Amishi Ja, Dr. Ja to join us in May. And we're super excited about that. So we've been really leading like these 12 minute practices based on her research. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, Tara, for, for guiding us through. We really appreciate yeah. it. <clears throat> yeah, and hope everybody has a yeah, a good weekend and we'll see you next week. Tuesday yes. we'll have Kel Juilliard here. So happy to have him. So thank you again, Tara. And thanks yeah, thank, thank you, Suzanne, for leading and thanks everybody. Yeah, see you soon. Thank you for the little globe, Janice. <laughs> <laughs> okay, see you soon. <laughs>